Hello. In this sequence, we'll be looking at reflection, the capacity for introspection in Faro, and why it's useful. A reflective system. Reflection is divided into two major families. Introspection is a program's ability to observe its own state. Intercession is a program's ability to modify itself, to modify its own state or interpretation. Reification is a concept that consists of making explicit objects things that are normally implicit. For example, the execution stack in Faro is explicit but can be got as a classic object. More classically, a class in Faro is a totally classic object. In other languages, classes aren't objects. A reflective system, as I said, has its own representation of itself. It's capable of representing itself, and it can act on this representation to modify itself. And when it modifies itself, it changes its state and representation. We call it a causal connection between its representation and its state. If we change the state, the system representation changes as well as the state of the system. Why is this interesting? It's interesting because we'll use this introspection and intercession to look inside objects. I'm defining a collection, which I make an ordered collection. Then I'll use the Faro Inspector, which is a tool, which can look inside this object. It's an instance object of the ordered collection class. And we see here it has instance variables. First index, last index. We have the values of this object's instance variables, so 1, 12, and then an array of 12 elements, OK? We might wonder how this inspector tool is able to look inside objects. How can it see the internal state of objects? It uses introspection methods to look inside the objects. There are lots of them, defined as objects. So, instvaret allows us to see an instance variable according to its number. I'll see instance variable number one of this object. I can modify instance variable number one of this object by setting a new value. Or, I can access an instance variable by its name, or change it by its name. Instver named put, okay? Here are some examples. Typically, we create a point, and then we do the point is 10 at 3, instver named x. I'll get the value of the instance variable called x of this point, which gives me 10. Then, instver named x put 33. I've changed the value of the instance variable x of this point. It's gone from 10 to 33. I've been able to change the inner state of an object by using introspection and intercession, particularly intercession, instver named put, okay? The main point is that we've violated encapsulation. An external object has modified this object without being internal, so it violates encapsulation, but it's extremely useful when building tools and during development. It's not to be used in the normal code of an application, but it's extremely powerful for building generic tools, typically code inspectors. I'll give you another example of introspection, the class method. For getting the class of an object, it's defined in object class. I ask this string its class. It gives me the class string. This point, what is its class? The class point. Smalltalk class. I can ask the class of the class class, etc. Then I add class class. Basically, I can query the system by sending the message class to objects to discover their class. There are many methods for querying the system. Here, I take ordered collection and send it lots of query messages. I'll get all of its superclasses, all of its selectors, the name of its instance variables, all of the selectors, the name of its instance variables, all of its subclasses, etc and all of its lines of code. All of this allows us to build top-level tools, 
such as the navigation system here. This navigation system lets us show or browse the system. For example, I can see all the classes that implement the method hashtag. Here, we have a window that will open. We'll see all the implementers of hashtag, so the class abstract file reference implements the method hashtag. I have a list of all the classes implemented by this method. Another example, we'd like to implement a menu or a button. By clicking on it, we want to send a message to the object behind it, according to the button's name, for example. How do I turn a string into a message to send to an object? I have an intercession method for that, perform defined under object. I pass it a symbol, the name of a message to execute, and it will send this message to the object in question. I have a second kind of message, perform with. I can give the name of the symbol, the name of the method to execute, and then pass a list of arguments. An example, if I do 5 factorial sending a classic message and send the reflective message, it's 5 perform hashtag factorial. That's a symbol which means object 5, please execute or receive the message factorial. The normal lookup is applied and these two forms are the same. Here's another example. Here we have a code inspector. Ordered collection, we can see inside the class ordered collection. This class contains attributes, instance variables, for example, method dict. In method dict, we see that the class ordered collection comes from behavior, so it has a method dict here. An instance of method dictionary containing compiled method. So we can see this method dictionary contains a compiled method here, etc. Another compiled method, lots of compiled methods. We'll be able to ask each of these compiled methods for their source code. If I do self get source, I'll get the source code of the compiled method. But we can go further. A compiled method can be asked to execute itself directly with the message value with receiver arguments. But watch out, if I do that, there's no lookup. Seeing as I already have a compiled method, it executes itself directly without a message. Here, I'll ask the integer class to get its compiled method factorial, which I get from the class compiled method. I send it the message value with receiver arguments. I pass it the arguments, the receiver will be 5. The arguments will be parentheses, because it's a unary message, and we'll get the result. It triggers execution of the compiled method without lookup. So to summarize, reflection is extremely powerful. We've seen it's something that allows us to introspect the whole system because it represents it in itself as an object, but also to modify the state of the system. It lets us build tools in a generic way in all objects. So you can really talk to objects with a protocol that's structurally the same for all objects. But watch out, it violates encapsulation. It isn't used in operational code, but for tool building. It facilitates the writing of code inspectors, as we saw. And you can see how it's implemented in Faro.